We're back here at St. Bernard's High School in Eureka, California, home of the St. Bernard's Crusaders. The Timberwolves on the road in this rebroadcast on the Skunk FM. Fourth down and short for the Crusaders who are now moving left to right across your radio dial and left to right across your TV screens. And they're going to try a quarterback sneak, and the surge is there for first down, and he breaks free. Going all the way into the end zone is Melo. Touchdown, Crusaders. Fourth and short. The ball at the 24-yard line. Everybody's stacked up and bunched up on the defensive line, and Mello ran into the end zone after he got through the initial contact and a penalty flag here. Hold everything. The flag came in so far behind the play, I can't see how, but they are talking to Fort Bragg. Unless there was an excessive celebration that I didn't see, I don't know what the call would be, but we're going to find out here. So penalty stops the action. The Crusaders have apparently scored here, but let's wait and see what the penalty flag brings about. I picked up the last flag. A lot of discussion. If... If there was a hold right at the end of that play, it almost happened behind him, but Mello did break for the end zone at about the 10-yard line, and there was a, a player with him there, and let's see what it is. No, it is a touchdown, and it is unsportsmanlike conduct. So the St. Bernard's Crusaders, even though it's a Catholic school, got a little exuberant and excited when they scored that touchdown. Too much so for the officials, so the extra point, and th you know, this could be a big deal here. The extra point's gonna be a little bit more difficult for either the kicker or the conversion. 11.51 to go, six nothing. St. Bernard's has taken the score on a 24 yard nice run from Christian Mallow. It was just a quarterback sneak right up the middle, but he sort of rolled off and, and slid off his uh, right tackle, got into the open field and scampered in for a touchdown. Nice run. So they're sorting this out. It should be 15 yards if it's unsportsmanlike conduct. So it should be out at the 17-yard line for this extra point, and that's where they're going to take it. So they set it down there. And I mentioned watching the kid warm up kicking at Shed Bean. He was making them from this distance without too much difficulty. Let's see how he does. The ball spot at the 25 with a 10-yard deep in the end zone. This will be a 35-yard extra point, only 25 yards from the spot on the field, and it's up and Short. Okay, no good. So the score with 11.51 to go in the second quarter. St. Bernard's drawing first blood. The Crusaders six. The Timberwolves nothing. We're back now with more action. 11.51 to go. Second quarter. Crusaders leading six nothing as they set up to kick off now. Zach Smith and Todd Wad deep to receive for the Timberwolves. And a different man, Pimental, handles the kickoff duties for the Crusaders. And it's an onside kick, and he just squibs it out of bounds. And that's a not a good thing to do if you're a Crusader. In the old days, you just went five yards back and kicked it over. But watch what happens here. The Timberwolves are going to have it first and 10 at their own 40 yard line. Similar to a punt, if you punt the ball out of bounds, wherever it goes out of bounds, that's where you get it. A kickoff, if you kick it off out of bounds, you don't go five yards back and kick it again like the old days. Wherever it goes out of bounds, that's where the other team will receive it. Uh, this is again high school football. Rules a little bit different in the NFL. All right, Richard is the up back. Smith back behind him in the I formation as the Timberwolves come out on offense. The give is to Smith. Smith actually went inside. And had he cut outside, Richards actually had a pretty good block that time, but he went inside instead of outside and uh, didn't get much of anything. Maybe a yard. It's going to be second down and nine. The ball is just across the Timberwolves 40 yard line. We're in the second quarter, 11.33 to go. Fort Bragg trading now six to nothing. St. Bernard scored a touchdown and then had a 15 yard unsportsmanlike penalty called against them for excessive celebrating after that touchdown. 
and thus their extra point kick failed. So there's where we are, 6 nothing. Ashby gives to Richard, and he is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Boy, any yardage he gets on these plays early in this game are very tough. He has not had much of a hole to go through, and once again at the bottom of that pile is Mana Tonabasa, whose name you could call almost every play defensively for St. Murders. So now it's going to be third and nine at the 41. The Timberwolves need to get to midfield and just across to get a first down. Palmer splits out here left. Wall slotted inside of him. Monson tight in on the right side. Banks are split behind Ashby. He's back to pass. He looks. He throws. It's caught. And tackled. Wall is jackknifed down across midfield. But a nice catch by Todd Wall. First down. Timberwolves in Crusaders territory. Down to about the 47-yard line. Ashby that time had time to throw, and it was a nice route that time. You may have noticed, those of you watching on video, the wide receiver, Palmer, kept going upfield, and cutting underneath him that time was Waugh. And he got himself open, made the catch, and a Timberwolf first down in the Crusaders' territory at the 48. 10-17 to go, second quarter. Ashby now with a man split out right, slotted inside him. Backs are in the I formation. It's a keeper. And Ashby just runs right up the middle that time, gets spun around, still on his feet, and uh, only picked up a couple yards. Well, actually, his initial forward progression got him across the 45 down to the 44, so actually about a three-yard pickup. It's going to be second down and seven. One of the things you can do to take advantage of a, of a guy like Mano Tanavasa, who's big and, and pretty mobile, for his size, 280 pounds, is to freeze him, is to, which is what they tried to do on that play, is to have something pop so fast that he wouldn't be able to react with him not right over center. All right, here's back to action, and this is given to the second man through, that's Smith, and he gets up close, close to the 40-yard line. Nice gain that time by the Timberwolves, but it's going to be short. It's going to be third down and about three at the Crusader 40-yard line. Six nothing. St. Bernard's leads. We're in the second quarter here. Nine minutes and 11 to go before halftime. Third down and four. Ball at the 41-yard line. The Timberwolves have to get to about the 36-yard line to get a first down or 37-yard line of the uh, Crusaders. So here we go. The Timberwolves break the huddle. Palmer splits out to the right. They're still in double threes. Vaughn splits out left. And once again, a keeper for Ashby. And he got it that time as he slid by the defensive containment off his left guard and picked up a nice gain for a first down across the 35 down to the 34-yard line of St. Bernard's. That's just a quick snap quarterback sneak. And if your line gets off the ball quickly on the snap, pretty much you're by that first initial a uh, series of linemen, the four downmen for the Crusaders, and if you've got a quick and nimble quarterback like the Timberwolves do and Tyler Ashby, sometimes that play can really break. It was good enough for a first down there. First and ten Timberwolves. Snap is fumbled that time, and Ashby on the snap recovers the fumble. That's kind of a, a tough way to start a first down at the other team's 35-yard line, but nonetheless, it's a yard loss due to a miscue. The Timberwolves is fumbling the snap, so it'll be second down and 11. Under eight minutes to go now in the half. Fort Bragg trailing 6-0. St. Bernard's with the lead. This is a good drive for the Timberwolves, though. Their best drive so far of the game. We're going to get down to the, about the 36-yard line. Level three techniques. Man splits out right, slotted inside of him. Man splits out left. There's a quick pass to the right. It's caught and hit immediately and dropped at the line of scrimmage or perhaps with a loss that time is Brandon Palmer. Almost a lateral that pass that time. Would have been interesting if he didn't catch it, whether that would have been a fumble or not, but it was caught, but no gain. But Nonetheless, the Timberwolves will have a third and 11 at the, about the initial line of scrimmage that play started from, the 36-yard line. 
They have to get down to the 25 of the Crusaders for a first down. So this is the second long situation for the Timberwolves, third and long here in this drive. They converted on a pass last time. See what they do here. 6.46 to go in the first half. And the shotgun is Ashby. And the Timberwolves, if they can get this playoff, get the snap, and Ashby spins around, and I think it's going to be delay a game, and it's stopped anyway, so I imagine the Crusaders will refuse the penalty. Although delay a game, I think that should have stopped the action, and, and they shouldn't have even let that play happen. They should have blown it dead. Let's see what the call is here. i got to remember I'm not the referee up here. I'm getting the signal now. It's telling the, uh, the players and the coaches to get away from the sideline. They're a little too close to the sideline here. Um, the official's talking over this penalty, and we're still waiting to see what it's going to be called. If it is a uh, delay a game, my guess is they'll refuse the penalty and set up fourth down, and that's what's happening. It's going to be fourth down. Harrion is out in punt formation. They're going to try and keep the Crusaders back deep in their territory, or maybe Coach Perkins has something in his bag of tricks. Let's see. 6.06 to go in the half, trailing 6 nothing. Harrion is going to punt it away. Almost blocked. A nice punt. Good spiral as it bounces into the end zone. And about a 36-yard punt for Harry in that time, nearly blocked by the Crusaders as they put on a fierce rush, but Harry got it away, got it into the end zone. No run back, first and 10 for the Crusaders at the 20-yard line. They're leading 6-0, 5.56 to go here in the half. You're listening to a rebroadcast of this game on the Skunk FM. I'm Lindy Peters, and you're listening, or I should say you're viewing and listening to the video streaming on MendocinoTV.com. Each and every game this year will be rebroadcast. Normally, the football games will be rebroadcast on the radio on Saturday mornings. But because this is a Saturday day game, it's being rebroadcast re Sunday afternoon following the Giants. But our normal routine, you can hear the games rebroadcast Saturday mornings. So we're set to go. The Crusaders have it deep in their own territory now as they take over first down. Mello gives and stacked up Ginevro that time by the defensive line of the Timberwolves. Also, Francis was there. So it's going to be second down and long, maybe about a yard gain that time. Second down and nine. Ball just across the 20 to about the 21-yard line. Crusaders again waiting for the play from the sideline now, checking their wristbands to see what it is. Players now getting into the correct formation as Bean splits out there to the left. All right, so here we go. There's two backs, an I formation give and stop that time. Nice tackle by Anthony Jeffries. And the up back that time took the handoff for the Crusaders. And didn't get much. Nice play. And he's, he's limping a little bit. That's uh, Logan Bongio, who was the uh, up back, almost off to the side, not really in a slot. He's still limping back in the backfield as the Crusaders get set. Now third down along, the Timberwolves need to stop here. They trail 6 nothing. 4.38 to go in the half. Mello back to pass, rolling to his right. Got some time, still rolling, throws, and a pass is caught. Pimentel makes the catch. Short of the first down, though. The ball is going to be short of the first down at about the 28-yard line on the right sideline. And once again, Christian Mello right on the money with his pass that time, but it's going to be third or fourth down at about a yard with the ball at the 29-yard line leading in this game 6-0. The Crusaders will punt it away. So Fort Bragg will get it back with 4.25 to go in the half, trailing 6-0. Deep to receive is Todd Wall. Along with him back there is Zach Smith. Smith has the potential to break a long one if he can get his hands on the football on a punt return. Shift on the line now for the Crusaders. Their long snapper comes in. They got 11. Brian Boehner. Boehner snap. Pimentel's kick is away from Smith and way out of bounds. 
it bounces almost into the bleachers over there across the way behind the Timberwolves bench. And so, let's see where it went out of bounds. The Timberwolves should get pretty decent field position, I think. The referee is stepping it off and marking it at just about midfield, I think. And that, in fact, is where they're going to spot it. So good change of possession for the Timberwolves as they held the Crusaders and got it back. They've got good field position. Remember last time they started deep in their own territory. This time they start from midfield. First and 10, 3.54 to go in the half, trailing 6 nothing. Waugh will split out to the left for the Timberwolves. Palmer splits out right. Ashby has been at quarterback the whole game. In fact, now two men slotted inside of Waugh out here to the left. Ashby drops back into the shotgun. And he fakes a pitch and then runs right. He's got some room to the 45, to the 40, and out of bounds. I believe he got the first down before he was knocked out of bounds. Everything came to the left. The guard started pulling left. I think the play initially was supposed to go left, but Ashby saw the defense was stringing out that play, pivoted, turned, and ran the other way and got a first down. Inside the, oh, they're going to call a measurement, I think, just inside the 40-yard line. 3.45 to go, first half, Crusaders leading six to nothing. It is a first down, they're not gonna measure. They move the chains. The Timberwolves come up to the line of scrimmage. Once again with Wall split out to the left. And once again Ashby's in the shotgun. He pitches this time to Smith. Smith trying to get outside. Stiff arms one man, is hit. Jukes him, still on his feet. And out of bounds finally, close to another first down, down to about the 32 yard line. So a nice run by Smith who created that pretty much on his own. He was hit about four times before he was finally dragged out of bounds. So nice tough running by both Richards and Smith in this first half. Nothing to show for it on the scoreboard, but they're turning up the yards. First down, or I'm sorry, it's going to be second down and short, the ball at the 31-yard line. Out of bounds that time, so the clock stops. 3.34 to go here. We're in the first half. Crusaders leading 6-0. This is a rebroadcast of the Timberwolves and the Crusaders from Saturday, September 1st. I'm Lindy Peters, also streaming on MendocinoTV.com. Second and short. Three men out to the right. Ashby over center this time. He keeps it himself, and he's got a first down and more as he breaks a tackle and gets inside the 20. First down Timberwolves, and he gets up a little slow that time. Uh, boy, his leg was wrenched like a wrestler, and he might be hurt that time. It looked like he got twisted. His ankle may have rolled on the tackle, and if you're listening on the radio, he went for one of those quarterback sneaks where you're not diving to just get a short yardage. He was running, and he got outside and spun, and just as he hit the ground or was starting to get tackled that time, the player kind of rolled under his leg and, and he kind of had a funny way of getting to the ground that time. You could tell his, he suddenly favored his leg as he went down and uh, he's holding the side of his helmet right now as the coaches are working on his leg, either his ankle or his knee, and that's not a good thing to see on the field. Your starting quarterback, as he just gets a first down at the 20-yard line, still on his back. He gets up, he's trying to walk it off. The backup quarterback for the Timberwolves is Anthony Costello. If you're injured and they stop the clock, usually they'll require the player to leave the field. And Ashby is going to leave the field. And it is a first down at the 20-yard line. He's limping, clearly not at full strength as he goes off the far sideline. 3.27 to go in the first half with the Timberwolves trailing six to nothing as we're back to action now following that injury to the Timberwolves quarterback, Tyler Ashby. So into the game from the sidelines comes Anthony Costello wearing a different number than he had last week. He's number 30 out there if you're watching the video streaming. And the Timberwolves are gonna call a timeout. Roy Perkins, I could hear him from here as he called the timeout. 3.08 to go here in this first half. The Timberwolves trailing the Crusaders 6 0. After that timeout, the Timberwolves break their huddle and head to the line of scrimmage. 6 0, they trail. 3.08 to go here in this first half. Waugh splits out to the left. Palmer splits out right as the new quarterback, Costello, over center. Sends Waugh in motion. 
gives to Richard. Richard is hit immediately and dropped in the backfield that time by, you guessed it, Manu Tanovasa. There is a penalty flag on the play across the field. The linesman has thrown a flag, which sometimes indicates offsides. Let's see what they call here. A motion call against the Timberwolves. So do you take the down or do you take the uh, five-yard penalty here if you're St. Bernard's? That might have to think about this one. It's either going to be second and 10 there at the 20 or it's going to be first and 15 at the 25. And they refuse it, which is what I would surmise would be a good call by head coach Jason White. This area of the field, when you get to the red zone, downs all, oftentimes more important. Ashby checks back in from the sideline, still limping a bit, but it's going to be second down and 15 at the 25-yard line for the Timberwolves. 3.02 to go here in the first half. Ashby, three men split out to the right. Zach Smith, the lone back. The pitch is to Smith. It's an option pass. Smith throws in a crowd, and it's dropped, but a penalty flag. That's got to be pass interference as Monson was tackled before the ball got there. Let's see. Again, I tend to referee before the referees do from up here. Easy to do. I do it at home when I watch the Niners from the armchair, too. But I believe Monson, who didn't catch that pass, was hit by two men before the ball got there. That was the option pass, and Smith actually put, put it in a pretty good spot. And that's, there's the call, pass interference, oh! and that'll be a first down and 10 for first the Timberwolves. Down, yes, first down. Automatic first down, and it's going to be marked inside the 15-yard uh, line, I believe. And it is inside the 15-yard line, and I'm sorry if I said an automatic first down. I guess it's a 10-yard penalty, and it's not an automatic first down. It's going to instead be second down and short, second down and two. The ball at about the 12-yard line, or 13-yard line. I said bring it up. As the Timberwolves come up to the line of scrimmage, Richard, Monson, and Wall all split out to the left. Smith back behind quarterback Tyler Ashby trying to spread out that defense a little bit and see if they can hit a seam pass here. They got Richard and Monson with size advantage out here to the left. It is a first down, first and 10 for the Timbers. Wall's gonna keep it after they spread it out and I don't know after his ankle got twisted if that's the guy I'd want running the football, but he paired, he's tough and he's okay. He picked up about three, it's gonna be second down. The Timberwolves can get a first down down at about the 13 yard line. Second down, it's at the 10 yard line. Second down and eight. Down to 225 to go in the first quarter. Six nothing, St. Bernard's leading, but the Timberwolves knocking on the door. Ashby with Palmer out to the right. Backs in the I formation. That's Richards the up back. Smith the I back behind him. Wall split left. The give is to Smith and he is hit. Richard the up back that time. He got a nice, he blocked it, gave him some room, and as he went inside, he got hit. Somebody's a little slow getting up for the Timberwolves. And one of the linemen, Espinoza, is a little groggy. They got it inside the 10 yard line. It's going to be third down at the nine yard line, third down and six. Now, again, this is four down territory. The Timberwolves don't have to get a touchdown either. A first and goal at the two or three yard line would be nice. A touchdown would be nicer, sure, because they trail 6 nothing. A minute 32 to go and counting here in this first half. Palmer splits left, Wall splits right. Richard is the up back. Smith behind him in the I formation. Ashby over quarterback, takes a snap, back to pass. He's got a man open but doesn't see him to the right. Now he's covered. Now he's running on his own, and he is going to be short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down inside the tent. Just for a second, I didn't quite see who that was. It looked like one of the Timberwolves had broken free in the corner of the end zone. But again, a lot easier to see from up here in the press box than it is for someone down on the field. So it's going to be fourth down. Ball right at the 10-yard line, fourth and seven. Trailing 6-0, under a minute to go in the half. The Timberwolves trying to tie this game up. Palmer split way out left. Wall inside of him on the slot. Ashby back, throws the corner out. Wall's there. He's got it. Touchdown, Timberwolves. Nice catch by Wall as he had to turn around and catch it backpedaling. 
10-yard touchdown pass from Tyler Ashby on fourth down at the 10-yard line. What a play to tie it up. Now the Timberwolves could take the lead. There's just 31 seconds to go in the half as the Timberwolves have struck Pater just before halftime. They're going to go for the kick. Harrion will place kick it. Ashby's the holder. This is a big extra point, obviously. Here's a snap. Spots down. The kick is up, and it is no good. Wide right. So all that, and it's tied. As Harrion's extra point sails wide right, 31 seconds to go in the half. It's Fort Bragg 6, St. Bernard 6. Just 31 seconds to go here in the first half. The Timberwolves just tying this game up on a 10-yard pass from Tyler Ashby to Todd Waugh. Extra point failed. So here we stand, 6-6. Six, six. Now the Timberwolves with 31 seconds to go. My guess would just be, again, kicking a squibber or a ground ball to try and alleviate any chance of a long return here. But you never know. The Crusaders are set up for a regular return, re, re, return here with uh, Bean back deep. Harry in to do the kicking, and here's his kickoff. It is, in fact, a ground ball, and it's picked up by one of the up men, Pimental, and he breaks a tackle as he tries to get to the left side, and he is brought down that time by Brandon now on special teams. And that takes seven seconds off the clock, so with 24 seconds to go, the Crusaders will have fairly decent field position given the fact they have shown that they could throw the football. So it'll be first down and 10, their own 45, 6-6 six, six tie. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Lindy Peters, rebroadcasting on the Skunk FM Sunday afternoon following the Giants and streaming on MendocinoTV.com on your video device, whatever it might be. You can take us anywhere, anytime in a cage. Here we go, first and 10. Closing seconds of the first half, tie game. Mello is going to keep it on the ground. And Running to the left that time is Nicholas Ginevro. Ginevro picks up about uh, five yards and 11 seconds to go, and Coach White calls a timeout. I believe I've been saying Ginevro. I think it's Ginevro is the correct pronunciation. My apologies to anyone from St. Bernard's who's been listening or watching the video stream if I've uh, mispronounced one of your skill position players, Ginevro incorrectly. Well, we'll keep it right here for this timeout. Pretty easy to set it up. There's 11 seconds to go in the first half. It's a 6-6 six, six tie. You're 50 yards away. Uh, this is the high school level, so getting in field goal position is, well, I don't think you'd be trying to do that. If, if it happened, you'd take it. But the bottom line is the Timberwolves need to play that so-called prevent defense here. They have to make sure to stay in their position, stay on their man, and uh, just try and stop a big play because that's what it's going to take. And uh, 11 seconds sometimes is enough time for two plays if, if they, of course, are passing plays. So this might not be the last play of the first half. It very well could be. But uh, with 11 seconds to go, there's time for at least two plays but I'm not sure beyond that if there would be time for any more. So, can they go 50 yards in two plays? We're going to find out defensively. The safeties are back at the 30-yard line, 20 yards off the ball. Here's a pitch, and there's a run inside the 40 down to the 35 with four seconds, three seconds. Actually, right at four seconds, someone called a timeout or the clock stopped because it's a first down, I think. And now they're going to try and spike the ball with four seconds to go if they can get lined up in time. The clock never even started, now it starts. I mean, they, th they threw that football down and then the clock started and officials throwing a flag possibly, well, that was just kind of a crazy sequence there. Um, delay a game, or I I'm not sure what the call is there, but anyway, there's three seconds to go. Now they, there was 4.4 seconds to go 
They were trying to stop the clock. It went from 4.4 down to 3.1 after he had spiked the ball. So, and there they are, putting 4.4 seconds on the clock. That's the right call from the official there. And that, that could give the Crusaders, you never know, in one second that could be enough. So you can't say that's being picky, picky, picky here. And the, the, the official's explaining to Coach White down here, the clock started after the snap, and he's correct. I, I, the, the clock keeper, and granted, we're all volunteers up here in this press box, most of us anyway, that, uh, you know, that's going to happen. So bottom line is here we go. This is no doubt the last play. There are four seconds to go. It's at the Timberwolves' 40-yard line, so they're certainly within scoring range on a long pass. Given the fact that Christian Mello has shown a good arm, five foot ten. 185 pound senior for the Crusaders. And now they spike the ball to get a timeout. And now the clock ran from 4.4 to 1.9 seconds to go. And anyway, all right. So, so there's timeout on the field. I guess 1.9 seconds to go. My apologies here as we. Uh, try and get everything squared away. This is high school football. The officials are not getting a travel per diem and six-figure salaries out there on the field. I imagine when you get to the big time, it's more like seven figures. I don't know. But nonetheless, let's try this again. This should be the last play. First half, 6-6 six, six tie. Crusaders have it. Mello fakes a pitch. Rolls to his right. Monson with good containment. Collars him in. He gets a pass off. It's incomplete. Ooh, and a rough hit that time by Tyler Ashby. After the pass, you can hear the Crusaders fans are going, hey, the, you know, but that was, that was just a good hit that time. But that's the end of the first half. An exciting game. The first half kind of ended with a thud there, but the Timberwolves have tied this game up. The score at halftime, it is Fort Bragg 6, St. Bernard 6. We have a great ball game here. Stick around for the second half. We're rebroadcasting this game on the skunkfm.com, and we're streaming video on mendocinotv.com. I'm Lindy Peters. It's been a great first half, a 6-6 tie. We'll be back with the second half right after these messages. You're listening to a rebroadcast of Timberwolves football. I'm Lindy Peters for your sports leader in Mendocino County, the Skunk. Stick around for more action coming up. At some point in your life, you're going to need a good attorney. Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, is the only practicing attorney in Fort Bragg that was once a Fort Bragg Timberwolf. He knows the community, he knows the history, and best of all, he knows the law. Whether you're struggling to put together a will, feel you've been wronged by another business or individual, been charged with a crime, or simply have questions on whether or not you have a good legal case, call Ryan Perkins in Fort Bragg, 964-4900. Ryan Perkins, attorney at law, on your team. Alyssa's Coward House Elf, a purity supermarket in Fort Bragg. This week, back to Nature Ganola selected varieties just for 29. Plums, 99 cents a pound. Coors, 12 packs, 12 ounce cans of bottles, 9.99 plus tax. Haas avocados, 69 cents each. Say purity this week, North Franklin, across from the post office. At North Coast Tire, Rick and Wendy are committed to quality and excellence. From tires and tune-ups to brakes and alignments, go see Rick and Wendy at North Coast Tire at 440 South Main Street or call 964-3184. That's 964-3184. Hey, great news from Fort Bragg Transmission. Their service has expanded, and now they do most general vehicle repairs. They're ready for radiators to differentials and from wheel bearing maintenance to tune-ups. Call Fort Bragg Transmission on Franklin Street for dependable automotive repairs. Fort Bragg Transmission, 964-7960. You're listening to a rebroadcast of Timberwolves football. I'm Lindy Peters for your sports leader in Mendocino County, the Skunk. Stick around for more action coming up. <laughs> 